Welcome back to GCN Racing and highlights of Stage 3 of Paris-Nice. The second longest of this edition at 212.5 kilometres, starting from chalet sur loire and heading all the way down to La Châtre. The wind forecast had changed overnight, still as strong, with gusts of up to 50 kilometres per hour, but now expected to come from west-southwest, making it a headwind for most of the day. And in pro cycling, a headwind makes it easier for the riders. There was still a chance of crosswinds though, particularly in the final 19 kilometres after the second and final intermediate sprint. Now in the first two stages, we had breaks of two riders, but today there was only one man, Tom de Vriant of Circus Wanty Gobert. There was a brief skirmish in the main peloton as the Israel startup nation sensed a bit of wind with 80 k's to go, but ultimately it would all come to nothing and everything calmed down once again in the peloton. De Vriant did have a brief bit of company in the form of the local gendarmes as they were all forced to stop at a train crossing. In all honesty though, I think at this point he was pleased firstly for the rest and secondly for the fact he might get caught a bit sooner. Although it still took another 50 k's for that to happen, Fair play for De Vriant, just under 200 k's on your own at 35 k's per hour into a headwind is not bad going. It was yet another very nervous day behind in the bunch though with multiple crashes, this one involving Roman Bardet. Julian Alfarez was the worst off, he'd end up finishing last on the stage. That all important sprint was located with 19 k's remaining, world champion Mass Pedersen clipping off to take the points and the bonus seconds, Kasper Asgreen and Julian Alaphilippe in close attendance behind. De Koenig Quickstep seemed once again to be determined to split it in the crosswinds and it caused a lot of tension within the bunch, everybody trying to make their way towards the front with speed in excess of 70 km per hour. and they were still in excess of 60 km per hour when this crash occurred. It was a particularly nasty one involving the likes of Nicky Terpscher of Total Direct Energy, Max Valscheid of Team NTT and Brian Cockart of B&B Hotels amongst others. At the front, Team Somewhere had taken a semblance of control as they reached 5 km to go, running for their big sprinter on the right here, Case Bowl. There seemed to be a constant danger of crashes though, it was tense just to watch, let alone to be racing. Into the last couple of k's and it was still mayhem, De Koenig now back at the front in an effort to lead out Sam Bennett. Peter Sagan though was looking particularly dangerous, always in the right place and this was a finish that suited him perfectly. With the Koenig's lead out disintegrating gradually, Lotto Sudau eventually took over at the front. John Dagenko, a former stage winner himself at this race, riding for their sprinter Caleb Ewan. But unfortunately for the Australian, both he and Sam Bennett were taken out by Hugo Hofstetter, who got his bike tangled up with Ewan's. At the front, it was Kofidis who were doing their final lead out for an invisible Elia Viviani. Behind, biding his time, Sagan. He waited and waited and launched with 150 to go, but to his right, Ivan Garcia Cortina had already gone. The big Spaniard from Bari McLaren had taken advantage of the mayhem and got the jump on everybody else. It was a long sprint, but it didn't matter. Cortina more than strong enough to pull it off and to take what is easily the biggest win of his career so far. This was the aftermath of the crash. There are going to be a few sore bodies at the race this evening. No such troubles for this man though, and celebrations all around for his team. Here is a slow-mo of the crash. Looks as though Hofstetter's bike got caught in Ewan's, pulling them both over to the right and leaving Bennett with nowhere to go. We shall wait and see where this man is going. You'd imagine that this win could open the floodgates. He's been promising this kind of result for quite some time now. Bennett would eventually be shepherded across the line by his teammates, blood pouring from his hand. We'll wait and see just how severe his injuries are. There's the top three from the stage, and it was quite the man to beat, wasn't it? Peter Sagan in second place, and a great ride by Andrea Pasqualon to take third for Circus Wanty Gobert. Surviving the mayhem, Sagan's teammate Max Shackman crossing the line safely to conserve his overall race lead. He now sits 13 seconds in front of Nizzolo, Sturven, Schmidt and Higita rounding out the top five. Tomorrow it's individual time trial day, 15 kilometres around a technical little circuit in saint amand montron The opening half is the toughest from a climbing point of view, but time gaps are likely to be small amongst the favourites. Victor Campanart is the obvious pick, and so instead, I'm going with Alberto Bettiol. Let us know your predictions in the comments section below.